Hi guys, welcome back. This is Match Hat episode 137, featuring a review of a brand new game. This is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Now, as you know, I usually cover old games here on Match Chat, but I thought I would break with tradition uh, because uh, Reckoning is a really rare example of an action RPG done right. Uh, there's, it's very focused on action and combat, uh, but not at the expense of the fun aspects of RPGs and tactics and strategy and building up a character in interesting ways. And anyway, I really enjoyed this game and think you will too. So without further ado, here is Reckoning. All right, folks, here we go. This is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. There's 38 Studios, founded, of course, by Kurt Schilling, the former Red Sox pitcher. And then Big Huge Games, or Big Huge Engine, it says there. And they brought Ken Ralston out of retirement. He was the lead designer on Morrowind and Oblivion. So I don't think we're going to be too surprised if we see some influences from those games here. Now, the game world was created by R.A. Salvatore, who, of course, wrote all those great Drizzt novels about the drow. And uh, Todd McFarlane uh, apparently had some role in this as well. He's the a comic book artist. I really uh, know him for his work on the Spider-Man comics back in the 90s, I believe, maybe late 80s. Of course, he created his own character, Spawn, as some of you guys probably know. All right, let's get this started. From the beginning, we were wrong. And only now, well into the second decade of the conflict, have we begun to understand the mistakes we have made. Sounds like 3D realms. We lived in harmony among the Fae. In a world awakened to new magic, perhaps yo, yo, we should have seen what might be born on this rising tide. What force might awaken? A force powerful enough to twist even the eternal and immutable favor. Well, that's what I call some damn good armor. But Gadflow. The new Gad flow to court surprised us all. Singular among his people, he was all that other Fae were not. Aggressive, ambitious. I think he even Shinary. dated some women. He had power like none we had ever seen. Terrible and deadly. Not the hair. Gadflow and his followers, the Tuatha Dei, I think he's the bad guy. That a new god was to be born in the east. Beneath Gadflow's crystalline fortress of Amethyn. In the name of that, oh, world, yes. they watched the war against the nine races oh, of Amalur. Yes. Against a mortal army, no matter the power of their god, we might have been victorious. But the Fey are creatures of magic, not bound by the laws of life and death. And sex. Each two as are fallen on the battlefield would soon rise again. For the Fae do not know death as we do. How could we stand against such a force? Who thought it was a good idea to call these ten guys the Fae? Raged. For ten years, the armies of men it's a good thing I'm too mature to make jokes died. about something like that. But as our numbers dwindled, we knew that it was only a matter of time. Our fate had been written. At least, that is what we believed. Until you died. And that's game over, folks. I'll see you guys next week. Yep. I'm trying to recollect if there's ever been a role-playing game that started off with your character. Awakening from death with total amnesia. Uh, I'm trying to remember nameless one. Uh, God, help me out, guys. Can somebody... It's, I, uh, I give up. This game is totally original. There's never been an RPG that started off with fortune teller cards. Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning! I just thought I could use something like that. Oh man, I'm starting to get that deja vu experience again. God, I wish I could remember. This is tormenting me! Could even be a Jotun. Always a surprise, eh, Gran? Eyes on the job, boy. Don't matter what it is. Blimey. It's dead. And be thankful for that. All we've seen. Go on and pull back the sheet, though. It'll need to be in our report, one way or the other. It's a Turkish ambassador. All right, now we get to create a character. Finally, some good old role-playing game stuff. 
lot of decisions to make here at the beginning, and it is kind of uh, worth uh, looking into this. Uh, basically, what you have to decide is what kind of basic gameplay style do you want. you got the standard rogue, mage, and warrior templates, or you can do some kind of mix of those. It's actually a very flexible and fun system. Uh, you can create a lot of uh, interesting characters, but it probably helps if you, you know, at least have a specialty in your uh, trades or crafts. you got alchemy, sage crafting, and blacksmithing. And if you try to uh, spread yourself out too thin, you're going to advance very slowly, so... I'd just uh, go with one, <laughs> maybe two, and save the other for a different character. Ah, the choice of gods. A lot of options here. You can even go with none. You know, pretty, uh, pretty intelligent design here. You still with me? <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, I hate this part of these role-playing games. I, I never have really cared what the character looked like. I guess it's kind of fun going through there. <laughs> it's like a menacing smurf. Oh, now I gotta pick hair. You know, nothing makes you feel readier to kill some dragons than feeling like you just came back from Fantastic Sam's. It looks like a good dragon hair, <laughs> dragon slayer haircut, cornrows. That's intimidating. Oh, what jewelry? What the? <laughs> what next? <laughs> next up, choice of fingernail polish. Oh, well, there we go. Got a, a tattoo on my forehead. Beautiful. Losulfar. A long way from Icebry, too. Still, he's in better shape than most we see. Gee, thanks. All right, then. Make sure it goes into the report. You know he'll want all the details. Amazing how well the body held up. Better than I've seen. I'm just glad it's not moving. Must have been born under a lucky star, this one. Anything else we need? To play. Unless you'd like to name him, I think we're done. Put him with the others. Oh, 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 input. Oh, okay. Give this guy a name. Well, I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> so far. What are we, six... Almost seven minutes in. Come on, guys. <laughs> At least you can save some time by just skipping over that 40-something page Eula piece of Well, that's it for you, then. Better luck next time. And that's all for this week's Match Chat. I'll see you guys next week. No, I hope you enjoyed that. I want to thank everyone who has... Wait a minute! Waking up in my apartment! Ah! If you look real close in the background there, you can actually see a little flying skull. His name is Mort. I'll give you a code at the end of this video where you can unlock Mort, play with him as a henchman. You know, the sad part is there's probably some viewers out there who have no idea what I'm talking about. If that's you, I strongly suggest you stop wasting your life and Spend more time alone with your computer. you really regret that on your deathbed, you know. Alright, I think I might actually get to play here in a few minutes. Let's see, we're up to the eight-minute mark. I guess we're lucky we didn't end up with the director's cut. It has 15 extra minutes of this guy walking. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yes, we have a HUD! Oh, I can even move! <laughs> this is great! Ow! Okay, I can spin her. Oh, no, no, no. What do we have here? Oh, a little... My information screen. Just quite a bit of uh, statistics and stuff like that you can look at here, actually. So, compared to a certain other game whose uh, name shall not be mentioned, it's actually very fast. Just one click. Boom, there you go. You don't have to monkey with that interface hardly at all once you once you get it set up. <laughs> Figure out what button does what. And look at the speed. I mean, this guy is hauling ass... Everything is fast. Click, boom, boom, reading a scroll. <laughs> well, that's probably not the most exciting example. Uh, let's see what happens there. Or not. Got to go. Don't have time to wait. All right, I'm getting some uh, stuff. Getting an inventory. You got primary weapon and secondary weapon. I guess you can set that up however you want, but the game suggests that you make your melee weapon your primary and then your ranged weapon your 
secondary, but I guess it depends on how you want to play. You know what would what this game really needs right here is some rats. I mean, why am I not killing some rats? I, I just thought that was sort of understood. Oh. <laughs> Come here, you! <laughs> Wasn't just any rat either. That was a giant rat. <laughs> Stay away of my ass, man. You got some more rats in here. I just know it! You know, part of the OCD in me wants to destroy every freaking barrel and every crate, but I'm not. I'm gonna resist the urge. Oh, it's killing me. Help, oh. oh, somebody needs help. Probably Bethesda. Ah, screw them. I don't know what's up there. Please help me. Rescue Please. the gnome. Mortal scum. What if I don't want to rescue the gnome? Ah. Maybe I can be really mean to him in a dialogue option. I'm getting my ass kicked here, guys, and I want to say it is not my fault. I'm actually really awesome. But, uh... I'm playing this on a 360 and streaming it into my capture card. And there's a, a bit of a delay, a couple seconds delay. And that is enough, believe it or not, to totally throw me off my game. Actually, that's not much different than how you usually play. Well, at least this gnome is grateful. I've seen you before. Is he hitting on, on me? You, you were dead. I'm just saying that because I tried that exact same pickup line. It did not work. No, no, clearly not. Not anymore. Imagine a cat pinned up in a steel chamber. We thought you were another. Well, if you get that one, you are a nerd. Well, restored your soul to your body, and it worked. We must get you to Professor Hughes right away. I don't think I should get a you tattoo like that. I got the forehead for it, you know. Lot, lots of real estate. I could probably get the nine planets on there too. Even, even Pluto. Professor Former Hughes, the well of souls. You know, this is pretty boring, but at least they don't make you sit there and listen to your own dialogue. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. I could be skipping over this, but I thought you might actually like to hear it, so therefore I'm talking over it. Yeah. They actually do a really good job in this intro of introducing not only the controls, but the different options you have for gameplay style. You know, you get an idea if you want to be a rogue or a mage or a standard warrior. It's pretty much what you would expect. You know, the, the knights, the warriors wear plate, the rogues wear leather. And the mages wear latex so thin it's almost like wearing nothing at all. Okay. Got a glowing item here. I'm picking up the different armor. You know, again, you can see how fast it is to run through here and select uh, what's better. Now, that number on the shield there in the middle shows me the defense. A little sword icon indicates the damage that it does. So it's, it's really quick to see what's an upgrade and what's not. Um, I like that a lot. Got a map that just pops up with a click. Once you visit a place once, you can fast travel there. The 360 version uh, uses this radial system for potions. Uh, you could put your healing potions in there, but it's really not necessary because you can also use the D-pad uh, to select a heals and mana pots. So I'll just save that for your, your stat enhancement. All right, something's happening. I can get to fight something cool here in a minute. But you know, you gotta—I gotta hand it to these guys. Even, even like the first few minutes of gameplay, it already feels like a, a game of epic scale. You know, I feel like I'm about to go up against something really massive. Uh, it's really exciting stuff. I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit here. At this point, I have my magic, my rogue skills, and my warrior skills. So I've had a chance to try them all out. I'm going to go for the mage style with this character. Get to kill some good old giant rats. You know, they're second only to rats in the pantheon of monsters you need to have in the first level of your RPG. You know, of course, I usually prefer turn-based combat, but even I have to admit they've, they've done a good job here. 
Uh, the precision and the timing uh, feels good. You you feel like you have good control over this character. A lot of the moves require the right timing. For example, if you block at just the right moment of when the monster's swinging, and if you can block at just the right moment, he'll go flying back, he'll get stunned. A lot of the more advanced moves depend on clicking at just a certain time interval uh, to get a little added bonus or added effect. There's lots of cool stuff like that in here. Actually, pretty intense. It's not overpowering, though. You, you definitely don't have to be a, uh, you know, a Street Fighter II pro <laughs> to get through these uh, battles. And, of course, if you're, if you're really terrible, you can always just grind somewhere, do a lot of side quests. There are many, many side quests. It's almost too many, but you can certainly level up that way and then come back and <laughs> easily dispatch the monsters. Uh, on the other hand, though, if you are good at it, you can advance very rapidly and kill monsters that are above your level, quote-unquote. So, really nice system. Load times, too, are a lot better uh, in some games. Uh, usually just a couple seconds um, of waiting. And usually worth the wait. You do have that unfortunate problem of every little hut requires a loading screen. Uh, but it's so brief, you don't really notice it. Here comes the first challenging battle. This is a... I guess you know, you'd call this a guy a boss. He's a rock troll. Much, much easier than the adult contemporary troll. All right, taking some pots. This should give me the edge I need to overcome my lag. Now, ideally, you should just watch him, and he telegraphs all of his moves, and then you just dodge or block at the appropriate moments, but I'm just going to have to muddle through here any way I can. Fortunately, it, it seems that my spells do a lot of damage to him, so that's that's nice. Shouldn't take too many hits to bring him down. The music is also quite nice. It was composed by Grant Kirkhope. He's a British guy. He did Goldeneye, Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark. A lot of great titles. You know, it's fortunate that I'm able to quickly, pretty much instantly, take a healing potion. Otherwise, I would <laughs> never survive any of these boss battles. <laughs> See if I can just wheel him down a little bit more. I'm trying to pull out all the stops here. You know, you'd think of being on fire would maybe slow him down a little bit, but it just seems to be making him mad. There we go. Come on, come on. Almost got him. I actually have died. <laughs> just a little sliver left. <laughs> All right, here we go. Awesome finishing move time. This is the Reckoning mode. Just rapidly hitting A, and I get bonus to my XP. It's quite a nice system. Kind of reminds me, if you remember, when I interviewed Jay Barnson in that Drama Point, Drama Star system. Reminds me a lot of that. It's, it's a good idea. It adds a little, I call it kind of a fudge meter, uh, where if they're not sure about the difficulty level, uh, you can add a system like this. So uh, pretty much if you know you're going up against a really tough opponent, you can just activate Reckoning Mode and pretty much uh, obliterate anything. I thought I would show you my other character briefly. This is a good two days in. You know, still a long ways to go before the end. Of course, I've been doing a lot of the side quests and faction quests. And I saw one reviewer that said you could, if you just stick to the main quest, you can be done in, in 20 hours, which, you know, still a pretty substantial investment. I don't think you're going to mind too much. So my road character, he's got a lot of uh, stuff that affects more than one enemy. He's got some bombs that can uh, distract or even poison the bad guys. He can uh, zoom behind them. A lot of the stuff, if, it's sort of like the same stuff if uh, you're familiar with World of Warcraft, but a little more intense, a little more action. Actually, a lot more <laughs> action-based. <laughs> you know, if you've ever played a World of Warcraft and really thought it could use some more tactile feeling combat. I think you're going to really love this game. You know, I'd have to say my favorite aspects of this game, I really appreciate the variety and the settings. There's a lot of different places that you can go to, and they look very different. And they're all interesting, and you want to explore them. Big map, overland map, lots of dungeons and caverns and caves and things of that sort. Towns and cities. Uh, the, a lot of the abilities that you can learn in combat actually do change the way that you play, uh, which is always nice, too, so the gameplay doesn't get dull, stagnate. 
you'll notice I have a, a companion here. And even that system, which usually results in <laughs> lots of frustration, is not bad at all. I never had any of them die on me. Now, they seem to hold their own pretty well. You actually appreciate having them around. It takes uh, some of the attention away from you. What I really love about the Rogue are these sneak attacks. You just go into stealth mode, slip up behind, hit X. And if it doesn't one-shot him, it almost, you know, takes him down. And plus, you get that awesome animation. Now, you notice I have my Fate Muter up all the way. That's that glowing ball in the top left corner. Now, but I'm going to uh, save it because I have a really tough battle coming up where it will prove essential. Yeah, there's a bit of a Raiders of the Lost Ark vibe in this room, lady. Uh, maybe you don't want to touch that. Oh, great. You know, big things happen when the lady grabs the shaft. All right, we've got Niskuru uh, Hunters. I guess these are original creations from Mr. Salvatore. Pretty cool looking, very menacing. Now, I've activated my Fate Meter, but I'm going to actually turn it off to uh, delay that gratification a bit because I want to have some left for the boss. So you'll notice it builds up. That's that purple bar there. It builds up as I kill things. Hopefully that will cap out by the time the boss is here. He's a real badass boss, too, so I will definitely need it. I'm focusing on the combat in this video because I think that's... If you like this game, it'll be because you enjoy that. Uh, the alchemy and blacksmithing, the, the crafting stuff, is not really all that fun in my opinion. It's very derivative. It's, you know, been there, done that kind of thing. If you don't like to pick herbs and find mats for blacksmithing and such as that, you can take other skills that give you comparable advantages. There's one that will give you extra gold from your, from your loot drops. You can specialize in mercantilism. So you get better deals at the shops and sell stuff for <laughs> better prices. You can uh, do lock picking and open up trap chests, or you can do dispel magic, which opens up uh, enchanted chests. I kind of hate that, really. <laughs> I wish that they would just have one skill for those. But uh, I guess they wanted to add a little diversity to the skills, give you more to, to work towards. All right, I think I'm finally about to kill these guys. It's Oh, here we go. Here he comes as a gold. Now, you know from your role-playing game lore, if a monster has two A's back-to-back -back in his name like that, he is bad. <laughs> and actually, the original name of this creature was Azagala. The guy actually was killed by the monster before he could finish naming it. And this guy's like belching ice and fire and poison. I mean, what is this? He's got a lot of stuff. But again, you know, if you if you time it right, you can dodge all of his attacks and you know, stay out of the range of his, or block his uh, melee attacks. It's, you know, I'm sure it's possible to get through this entire battle without a scratch if you're really, really good. And that's something I love about a game when you can muddle through it. Or, you know, you can take the time to really learn how to play and demonstrate some real mastery. I'm turning on the fudge meter. <laughs> now you'll notice in reckoning mode, I have the advantage. Easily dispatch him. Yeah, that's that's pretty satisfying. All right, hey, it's time to rapidly click X. X X X X X X X X X X X. Look at that. Leveled up, 1459 XP. That is just amazing. Yeah, she's got the power! I don't know what to feel. All the years I spent trying to claim this weapon, and I never truly thought I would. I was not fated to have it. Not until you came. I would show you what happens after that, but we like to keep things family friendly. All right, folks, there you have it. Kingdoms of Amalur. Reckoning. <laughs> you know, probably not the best title, but a good game. Uh, having lots of fun with this, and it's not something I thought I would like at first, uh, but it grew on me, and I definitely intend to finish it. So to that end, I will see you guys next week. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with a brand new interview series. I won't reveal the guest yet, but if you like Mad Chat, I think you're really going to 
love this guest. So keep your fingers crossed and stay tuned for that. As always, I want to thank you if you have donated to the show. Uh, your support really means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it, guys. I really just can't thank you enough. It uh, makes a huge difference to me and keeps this show alive. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, let's see about this ale of the week. I have something very special. This is a Three Philosophers um, ale. It's uh, brewed by the brewery Omagong or Omagang. I'm not sure how to pronounce that really. It, uh, it's apparently 98% ale, 2% ale with cherries added. So I'm kind of curious about that. I don't know if they actually tell you who the Three Philosophers are. Uh, <laughs> they look like modern uh, philosophers. Kind of curious about that now. Uh, this is brewed in, in, in New York, I believe. Yeah, Cooperstown, New York, uh, but it apparently is fashioned after the Belgian style. I'm uh, seeing 9.8% alcohol, so, yeah, you know, pretty uh, pretty strong. So anyway, let's get it open and see what a Three Philosophers tastes like. Well, that didn't sound right. <laughs> you guys. All right. Well, this is one of those things you could... I think you're supposed to open these uh, bottles with a cork in it, aren't you? Like, look right into it like this and... Uh, <laughs> I'll probably be sued over that. Don't try that at home. <sighs> nice little pop. All right, the proper glass for this is a drinking horn, as you know. Let's see. I want to fill the horn up all the way. There you go. Okay, three philosophers. You can definitely smell the cherry. It's a very aromatic, uh, aromatic brew here. <sighs> very pleasant, very fragrant. You can tell the uh, the Belgian influence as well. If you ever had something like a Chimay, this is similar. All right. Mm, very fruity, very, very fruity. Um, also quite smooth, a 9.8% alcohol. I don't taste any at all. Very pleasant, very kind of citrusy, or I should say sort of a, an apple-like uh, taste to this. Not bitter, um, just a sort of fruit, apples here, maybe a little hint of citrus. You definitely tell the, <laughs> the cherry is uh, definitely there. <clears throat> no real, a little bit of an aftertaste, but not a bad one. All in all, I have to say I'm very impressed with this. Um, you know, smells good. Very, ex you know, excellent choice all around. Apparently, at least one of the philosophers knew what he was doing. <laughs> anyway, three philosophers. I'll definitely give this uh, two thumbs up. Uh, see if you can find it and try some. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, let's uh, wrap up with a quotation. And uh, this week's quote comes from Plutarch. And it goes something like this. Fate leads those who follow it and drags those who resist. See you guys next week. Hi guys, Matt Barton here. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you about a new book. Uh, this is My Xbox. It's authored by Bill and Christina LeJudas, husband and wife, great friends of mine from armchairarcade.com. Now what this is, is a full color, lavishly illustrated guide to all things Xbox. It tells you about the system, Xbox Live, uh, Connect, and goes up beyond just the bare facts. Of course, they give you a lot of optimization uh, techniques, you know, anything that can help you get more out of your Xbox. Now, this would be good for anybody with an Xbox or uh, anybody who's new to technology or trying to learn more about the console, uh, trying to uh, get more out of the system. Anyway, it's great stuff and I highly recommend it. So, my Xbox, you can get this from Amazon or uh, you can learn more about it at armchairarcade.com.